So let's wrap up with one last case. Okay, and of course we left the most difficult case for last. Mm -hmm. um, this is a lady with uh, metastatic triple negative breast cancer. So about four years ago, a 58-year-old Caucasian woman discovered a lump in her right breast. It was four centimeters in diameter. Uh, her staging work was otherwise negative. Uh, it was a biopsy, a core biopsy was an infiltrated inductal carcinoma, ERPR negative, HER2 negative, by both IHC and FISH. Um, she received four cycles of AC as adjuvant therapy, followed by 12 weeks of weekly paclitaxel. Uh, 14 months later, she developed shortness of breath, and on PET-CT, she was found to have multiple bilateral pulmonary nodules, the largest approximately two centimeters in diameter. One of these nodules was biopsied and found to be consistent with the primary cancer. The tumor is ERPR negative and HER2 negative. So the question now is, what do we do with this lady? Um, Andy, you want to take a stab at this first? Yeah, you know, so we have a re relatively short relapse-free interval after anthracycline and taxane. She's got pulmonary nodules and short of breath and, and um, triple negative disease. So one of the things before I address systemic therapy, I just want to comment that this is a high risk scenario for brain metastasis. And even if this woman didn't have symptoms, I might want to, I might think about even in an asymptomatic woman with this pattern of triple negative disease doing a brain MRI. Controversial, yes, but. Mm -hmm. But no, I think um, very reasonable. How often are you going to do that brain MRI? And well, if I, if I have studies <laughs> to put her on. Uh, <laughs> Every time you put her so on a new study. Having, having said that, um, you know, Right now, unfortunately, we don't have a go-to drug in triple negative breast cancer, and it's not for lack of trying. Um, we're waiting for randomized data to convince us on uh, agents like PARP inhibitors, like platinums, like uh, anti-angiogenic agents. Um, right now, uh, I still would probably be treating this patient like I would another patient who had ER-positive disease that became hormone refractory. Uh, so. Uh, Probably I wouldn't be thinking about capecitabine because of, uh, I think of it more as an ER positive drug, um, but I'd probably be thinking about taxane again, um, possibly. Um, platinum? Would you use a platinum or I, a doubler I, versus I have, I have generally not been using platinum um, therapy. Um, the only thing, um, so, you know, there's, um, we still don't have a validated tool to help us understand subtype, you know, but we know that some go bone liver, some go lung brain, you know, some go pleura chest wall. I mean, there are clinical phenotypes. We just don't have any reliable way and more importantly, uh, implications for treatment. Yet, I think there are some educated guesses that we get some gestalt, you know, over time. And that was buttressed by the um, Isakoff data at uh, San Antonio, which is quite interesting, and I think another is TBCRC. Another trial. TBCRC. But shout out to TBCRC. <laughs> yes. You want yes, to explain yes, what TBCRC so. is for the audience? The Translational Breast Cancer Research Consortium, which is a consortium of different sites originally who had SPORE grants, but now uh, a little bit larger and is funded primarily by philanthropic funding from a number Avon, the Breast Cancer Research yeah. Foundation. Uh, there has been uh, other funding. I think Komen gave some money early on. And then we have a little bit of pharma funding for specific trials. But they're all investigator-initiated studies that have a translational component. So I w if, this, if the KI-67 on the metastatic lesion was super high, you know, 80, 90, 100%, I'm thinking basal, um, and I would, give, I would actually treat her with a platinum because I think it was about 80 patients and seven or eight, it was about 10% of patients most of whom got cisplatin 75, one got carbo AUC of six. This was a single agent. It wasn't a randomized trial of cis versus carbo, but um, of the patients who went years, you know, they went into a CR and then stopped and are years, uh, we all have them in our practice, we all have them. Um, they were BRCA, most of them were BRCA negative. One was untested, so we don't know. But that's interesting now, we've seen that. There's a very small group of extremely long remitters with platinum. And I have a patient just like this, precisely like this, and she went into a prompt CR with um, Gem Carbo. She's 18 months out so far. So I, I, would, be, I would be leaning towards a platinum-based uh, regimen for her. Well, both Edith and I, almost 15 years ago, did trials of carboplatin and taxotere in metastatic breast cancer. We should revive that. We should go back and look at the data. I've been thinking about going back to see the triple negative patients in that, because I do have a few patients, as I'm sure you do yes. in ACCG, yes. where we had long, these a few women are still alive, and they got one of chemo for metastatic breast cancer 12 years ago. Yeah. So you Joyce, uh, I, we've all told anecdotes <coughs> here tonight, but right. remind us about how Gem Carbo did as the control arm of the uh, putative- Is it 30% regimen? Yeah, it's, well, and 
forget 30%, but PFS in the triple negative population. It's like five months or four yeah. months. Yeah. Oh, yeah. five months. The thing yeah. is, though, is what, but I, I, worry, it's I more just worry that it's more I, think, I think because um, that arm was thoughtfully and rationally chosen as the control arm for the Aniparib trial, that a lot of the a lot of my colleagues in, in the country think of Gem Carbo as the go-to regimen for triple negative breast cancer when it hasn't been shown to be better no, than anything else. No, it's it's this particular else. kind. I, I would go with the platinum-based regimen. Now, the Isakoff data was single agent, either Carbo or cis, so it's got some data there. Interestingly, yeah. those long remitters all got a first line not second. Mm -hmm. So we may have a window of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm saying is that those long remitters, we stand up and salute. We don't want to miss those. And so th that, those data are very provocative. That Some he, of uh, my patients who have very resistant disease don't respond to anything, you know, don't respond to toxins. The only thing they ever respond to is a platinum combination. And I, t I started using gem carbo long before the Nipper data because they'd already failed taxanes. So what were you going to combine it with? Now, Maybe we could, the Isakoff data does argue that maybe we could just use a platinum alone, but uh, generally I have combined it. I'm not as, uh, and, and been thought that combination was good. I think we all use the other chemo drugs, aribulin, et cetera, and we're really, really looking for clinical trials that target so specific you, pathways that so might be So let's bring altered. that, I mean, almost to this brings kind of the